website. We will have a question and answer session towards the end of our webinar today. Please post your questions in the chat feature. If your question is not answered today, we will post the question and the response in a frequently asked questions document that will be posted on the grant program website. So let's go over the agenda. First, we're going to give you some background information on Broadband Ohio. Then we're going to talk about some background information on the Ohio Residential Broadband Expansion Grant Program. We're going to review the Broadband Ohio website. We're going to review the challenge process, the timeline, and then go over our question and answer session. So what is Broadband Ohio? Well, we were created by the DeWine Houston administration in March of 2020. The Broadband Ohio office is part of the Ohio Department of Development, and Broadband Ohio is dedicated to bringing high-speed internet access to all Ohioans, and one of our largest portions of that is the Residential Broadband Expansion Grant. So the Broadband Grant Program background is that it was passed as House Bill 2 of the 134th General Assembly. It's what created the Ohio Residential Broadband Expansion Program. Now, this program was created to help internet service providers offset, offset the cost of expanding into areas that lack service. The program is designed to assist with the infrastructure costs of the project and help build the networks that will otherwise serve Ohioans who currently cannot participate in the modern economy because of a lack of high-speed internet. So let's talk a little bit about the authority. The program authority was created by House Bill 2 and oversees the grant. The Ohio Department of Development staffs the authority and performs tasks such as receiving and reviewing applications. The authority scores and approves applications for the grant and consists of five members. The Director of Development, or their designee. The Director of Innovate Ohio, or their designee. One member appointed by the Speaker of the Ohio House. One member appointed by the Ohio Senate President. And that rounds out the entirety of the authority. And now I want to turn over our presentation to Amy Elbor, who was our Deputy Chief of Grants and Special Projects for Broadband Ohio, to give you an overview of the challenge process. Amy, take it away. Thank you, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amy Elbor, and I am the main point of contact for you throughout the grant application process, as well as the challenge process. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, and now I'd like to discuss the challenge process in detail. Please also remember to again submit your questions in the chat box as you go through as you listen today. All necessary information for this grant and the challenge process can be found at the link shown here. The website is broadband.ohio.gov and is also the link that and will also be the link that was provided in the invite to this webinar. By visiting this website, you can find information on Broadband Ohio, important dates, important information about the application, as far as information on the challenge process, as well as FAQ documents. On Monday, November 8th at 5 p.m., the application process will close. Legislation mandates that Broadband Ohio post the addresses of complete applications by November 13th, 2021 on the Broadband Ohio website. A challenging provider then has 65 days after November 8th to challenge an application. The legislation calls to the posting of addresses for complete applications within five days. As applications are submitted, they will be viewed to make sure all required components have been submitted and with the appropriate detail. If Broadband Ohio Office finds that an application is incomplete, the applicant will be notified of the deficiencies and will be given an opportunity to remedy. As long as an application is in an incomplete status, the addresses from the application will not be posted. After November 22nd, when the remedy period ends for incomplete applications, all applications found to be complete will have their addresses posted all at once. No challenges will be accepted before the completed applications are posted to the website, and challenges must be received on or before January 12th. A challenge must be submitted by using the challenge form, which can be found on the Broadband Ohio website grants page. A link to this form will be included in the FAQ document. A challenge must be sent certified mail to the Ohio Department of Development to the address on this slide, as well as to the applicant and the address listed in their application. A challenging provider must provide satisfactory evidence that is currently providing tier two service to the residential addresses contained within the application 
or it is providing tier two service in an area adjacent to the residential addresses contained within the application with plans to provide tier two services to addresses contained within the application no later than two years from the date of the challenge. The challenging provider must also submit evidence that the applicant was sent the challenge as well. For the providers who are challenging based upon the premise that they will be building into the area, the challenge should include a statement that they understand that they may be responsible for paying the funding gap back to the state if they fail to build the internet connectivity specified. A challenge will be deemed submitted on the date the challenge is received by development. If challenges are not received by the applicant being challenged on or before the date the challenge is received by development, the challenge may either be rejected or not considered until the challenge is received by that applicant. Development may request additional supplemental information from a challenging provider through a written request by email. Failure to provide supplemental information to development in the time and manner requested will result in a challenge being rejected. The challenged applicant's status will be updated in the application system and the system will generate an email to notify them that their application is being challenged. The authority shall update the status of the application on the Broadband Ohio Expansion Program website. The authority shall deliberate and make a final decision as to the challenge no later than 30 days after receipt of a completed challenge. The challenger and challenged applicant will be notified by either certified mail or email of the outcome of the determination. If the broadband expansion program authority suspends all or part of an application, the broadband provider that submitted the application may revise and resubmit the application no later than 14 days after the date of the suspension notification. When revising the application, please note that the applicant shall not expand the scope or impact of the original application, nor shall the provider add any new residential addresses to the eligible project. A revised application will be provided to both the authority and the challenging provider by the applicant, and this should be done by certified mail to the challenging provider, as well as to the Deve Department of, Deve Department of Deve Development. Broadband Ohio will publish the revised applications on the Broadband Ohio website. Upon receipt of revised applications, the authority will review the revised application and decide whether to accept or uphold the challenge within 14 days. The authority will provide a copy of its decision to both the applicant and the challenging provider by certified mail or email and will update the status on the website. This decision shall be considered final and further challenges to the revised applications are prohibited. If the authority upholds a challenge and the challenging provider fails to provide tier two broadband service as described in the challenge, the challenging provider after reasonable opportunity to be heard may be required to, to do either or both of the following in addition to being subject to other remedies available under the law. Pay to development the amount of original broadband funding gap for the application that was challenged and or comply with the requirements of any other penalties prescribed by agency rule and imposed after consultation with the authority. Any monies collected will be deposited in the, to the Ohio Residential Broadband Expansion Grant Program Fund. A de facto challenge will occur when two or more applicants, including the same include the same addresses to be served in their applications. The addresses will be awarded to the applicant who receives the highest score for their application. The notification process by the Department of Development will be the same for the will be the same for this process as well. Before we get into questions and answers today, I wanted to review the timeline for the grant again. The grant program application deadline is Monday, November 8th at 5 p.m. A list of complete application addresses will be posted on the Ohio Broadband Ohio website by Saturday, November 13th. And finally, the deadline for the challenge process is on or before Thursday, January 12th, 2022. I want to thank you all for being on the webinar this afternoon. For additional instructions on the challenge process, please visit the Broadband Ohio website grants page. This is also again where you can find the challenge form where a link with that will be included in the FAQ document. 
A frequently asked questions document regarding the challenge will be posted on our grant website. Please take some time to review this document. If you have additional questions, please send them to broadbandohio at development.ohio.gov. We will get the questions posted on the website and continue to update the document as we receive questions. I would now like to introduce Carly Costa, the newest member of the Broadband Ohio team who will be reading the questions you have submitted in the chat. Yes, we will have the slides and the webinar recording available for download. Right now, that is the only question I show. Okay. Let's see. I see a question um, from who are the broadband expansion authority members who have been appointed by the governor of the House and the Senate? Peter, do you want to answer that? Sure. Right now, Greg Sample has been appointed by the governor. That is what gives us a quorum to be able to operate as the authority. The Ohio House and Ohio Senate have still yet to name who their authority members are at this time. Carly, have you seen anything else? Patrick, have you seen any questions come in? I do not show any on my Patrick, do you? No, no others yet, but we certainly, okay. uh, this is a great time for them if somebody has any. Yeah, we'll give it a few minutes. It was a lot of information in a short amount of time. We'll make sure that people have a chance to digest it. And again, the this recording will be made available um, and the slides will be made available after this uh, after the session is over as well. I see a question coming in. What constitutes satisfactory evidence? Can you hear me? Yes. Would you like to answer that, Amy, or would you like me to take that? One? I'm going to have you answer that so I can write these questions down here. Great question. So the the question, um, as I understand it, is what constitutes satisfactory evidence? Uh, for the area, so the first thing I want to say is that uh, 477 maps are specifically called out. Uh, census level data is not acceptable as a challenge, um, but if you have any other information that you can provide as a challenge to the area, um, that is what we are looking for. So you can provide um, uh, if you have um, uh, maps that show where your coverage areas are that are not census tract level specific. Uh, if you can specifically show um, where your infrastructure is to be able to pass by specific ones of the residential addresses that we are talking about. Um, that is really what we are looking for. So anything that you can show um, that is more than census to level tracked data uh, that goes to the specific addresses that we are talking about to say that those addresses are otherwise covered um, by the challenger is what we are looking for. Great, thank you. And then that kind of goes to the next question of, will the challenger have to identify each residential address that they challenge? And the answer is yes, they will have to identify each residential address. That is correct. Mm -hmm. We did get a couple more questions during that one, if you guys are ready. Mm -hmm. If a local government is unable to provide funds, but is able to provide a letter of support, how will that impact an application? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, if a local government is able to provide funds, is unable to provide funds, but is able to provide a letter of support, how will that impact an application? Good question. So um, you are able to um, provide letters of support um, that will, um, that will not necessarily impact the application, but it'll be good to have. And I'll get more information on that as well. We'll give you a better answer in the um, questions. Well, and then the next one is if there are more, multiple challengers for an application prior to 1-12-22 cutoff date, when does the application revision time start? So that application um, revision time will start 14 days after the um, authority rules that on the challenge. 
Yeah, it will be, it, it, even if it's, can I jump in here for a second, yeah. Amy? Because I think I know it. They, yeah. it'll, that 14 day revision period is how long you have um, after the authority does that initial ruling to suspend. Perfect. Which is what Amy's, I just want to make the, so even if you have multiple challengers, you have the same revision time. You have those 14 days. Wonderful. And then I show one last question. Oh, actually, another one just came in too. How will maps of coverage areas be verified by the authority? Peter? Uh, the way the maps will be verified by the authority, um, we need to have enough information to be able to um, utilize the, the, um, the maps that they provide. I think the the question will be, um, depending on the, it will really be down to what data did we get from the provider that is the applicant versus the data we got from the challenger. We'll be using those two maps or those two uh, things together to make determinations as to which map or which of those uh, the authority um, is going to um, utilize to rely on for whether or not it suspends or rejects the application uh, or suspends the application or rejects the challenge. So the more detailed you can give, the better it is, both from the applicant's perspective as well as the challenger's perspective. Wonderful. How soon after the November 8th deadline will the applications be made public? Sure, so the applications um, will be made public when the um, Department of Development deems that they are complete applications. So as we go through, so as applications are submitted, um, the Department of Development will um, check to make sure for completeness, and then once the applications are deemed complete, they will be posted. Great. And then I have another one that asks, is there any specific format for the addresses provided? So we have a, um, so they, we have a, um, a form on the website that will show you how to, what information is needed, um, but it'll be, generally it'll be the street or the, the number, the house number, um, the street and the zip code in the county. Awesome. And then once all challenges are completed, when will the winning applications be announced? Sure. So um, as the application, so as we go through the application process and the challenge process, we are targeting Q1 of um, 2022 to announce awards. And um, so it's kind of the, the specific the specific date has not been identified yet, but we will give plenty of notice um, for when that does happen. Someone also said my audio is low. So hopefully that's a little better. I'm holding the mic directly to my mouth. Yes, that is better. <laughs> okay, sorry about better. that, guys. Um, all right, so. I see one that if a provider submits an addresses address or addresses that they are challenged by in an incumbent stating that they plan to provide tier two service within two years and they do not, this will financially damage the applicant. Is there any remuneration made to the originally denied applicant? And I'm gonna have Peter answer that. Great question, not at this time. Okay, and then Will the challenger have to post a bond to ensure their performance? And that um, is up to the authority to decide. Okay, and then I think I have three more additional questions for you guys as well. Are challenges on proposed funded area maps or just the address list? It is just the addresses listed. And then what is the process for monitoring successful applications over the two year build period after they are awarded? That is a good question. Peter, I'm gonna have you answer that. Sure, so the way that we're monitoring it is twofold. One is there will be milestones that are in the grant award. So if we're talking about the award itself, there will be milestones in the award process that are need to be reached to be able to unlock the different levels of funding. So not you do not receive all the funding up front. You'll receive a portion up front, and then there'll be progress payments made. 
So we'll be monitoring to make sure that you're reaching those milestones to be able to get those progress payments. And then at the end of the entirety of the process, we reserve the right to do speed testing and other verification tests to make sure that you actually are providing the service that you were supposed to be providing uh, as per the grant agreement. Um, so that is how we're going to be making sure that those are going. Um, that's how we're going to be monitoring that. Um, if it's the two year period for the challenger who's going to be providing service after the two year period, we'll run initial speed tests to make sure that the area is otherwise covered by the coverage maps that are provided to us by the, the challenging provider. Uh, if those do not meet the speed test data, then that's when we'll go through the process with the authority to say, okay, you're a challenger who challenged, but didn't do what you were supposed to do. Now we're going to take the remedies that we're allowed to take against you for not actually doing what you said you were going to do. Awesome. And then I have, it looks like maybe one last question. Will the financial section of the application also be made public? And if so, is there any way to make parts of that confidential? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I couldn't hear. Will the financial section of the application also be made public? And if so, is there any way to make parts of it confidential? Yes. So the, um, so, yes, yeah, so in the application, please make sure to mark anything that um, is proprietary or trade secret information um, in your application and we will not post it. Um, but uh, most likely the financials will not be included. And then um, I see some questions coming in about um, will the authority accept speed tests for existing customers? And then the address between the speed test addresses can be assumed to be served. So that is a good question and I will um, get you a more detailed answer in the FAQs. And then could you go over one more time how challenges work in the RDOF awarded areas? So that's a good question. Um, I will have um, in detail a more um, descriptive answer because um, we have gotten some additional insight on that as well. So I will update that in our challenge FAQ document with some more information. And then I show a question on my end as well. Are those milestones defined? If yes, can we get a copy of them? I'll answer that one. The milestones will be defined in each of the specific grant um, documents. And the reason I say that is because we don't yet know what the technologies being used are, what the areas that are going to be covered are, and what those milestones might need to be for each of the grants. So as they become available, as the grant documents be made become available, then yes, you can receive copies of those. Great. And that's all I see. Carly, do you see anything else? Nope, right now I do not see any additional questions. Okay, great. And like I said, if we were unable to get you specific um, responses today, please look for the FAQ document in the next couple of days. Um, we will send that out to everyone. And again, I appreciate you all being on the call today. Um, please, again, don't hesitate to reach out to Broadband Ohio at development.ohio.gov, or um, you can always email me, amy.elbor at development.ohio.gov. All right. Um, we'll give you some time back this afternoon and we look forward to uh, uh, hearing from you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.